Hello friends and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I'm currently waiting for my dad to come pick me up for work since we're gonna be running around. It was easier if he just grabbed me this morning, so I figured why not film this intro while I'm waiting. If it's echoey, it is because I am in my garage and I'm sure you hear the birds chirping in the background too. Today is like the first day, it's in like the 70 degree mark and I am loving it. I have my bookish sweatshirt on that I got even though the bookish is embroidered crooked. Everyone's telling me it's not a big deal but deep down it is really bothering me. <laughs> so this reading vlog is going to be shortened by one day at the end of the week just because I'm going on vacation but fear not I am taking you guys with me. I know this video will go up before my vacation vlogs do so for now I'm going to keep it a little surprise. Last night I was a powerhouse and read two books in an evening. Don't know how I managed to do that but this week we we are starting off fresh. We're going to be started. My dad's pulling up right now. Um, I'll finish this later. Hello, it is now the end of the work day, but as I was saying earlier, the first book I'm going to pick up this week is A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. I am so, so excited to pick up the new Samantha Downing book. Not only am I going to start my week by reading this, but this is also the Literally Dead Book Club's pick for August. If you don't know what that book club is, it is a monthly book club ran by Books and Lala here on YouTube. Every month that the title interests me, I try and participate. So obviously when I saw this was the selection for August, I had to purchase my own copy. My goal is to start this tonight and finish it before I leave for vacation on Friday. So I'll have a few days to get started and dive into this. The audiobook isn't that long, so if I'm physically reading and listening, I know it'll go by pretty quickly. Also, I totally forgot to include this just like 30 seconds ago, but tonight is the Men Tell All episode for The Bachelorette, so I don't know how much reading I'm actually going to get done. This song happens, got a hold on me, won't let go of me. This song happens, got a grip on me, won't say. What exactly is a twisted love story about? This book follows the couple Wes and Ivy and they are always in an on again, off again relationship. When it's on, it's grand gestures, head over heels in love, everything is perfect. But when it's bad, it's very, very bad. I'm talking arrest warrants, damaged property, vengeful fights, everything you could think of. So now they have recently just gotten back together and things might not be what they seem. They find themselves in the center of a police investigation where one detective is coming after them. And the truth might finally come out because one night long ago when they were broken up, someone ended up Dead. Hey, that was a pretty good elevator pitch, Alexis. That's basically all I know about this book so far, and all I can tell you is that I am eating up these short chapters. Pinball machines and ice cream. How fifty cities spin. Skipping classes. For the movies Julian Tender lessons And coffee How fuzzy of all me could be Beautiful light is in all right, I have to stop reading for tonight. My eyes are starting to do that like twitchy, focused, unfocused thing. Gotta tap out. But I am stopping just before starting chapter 32 tonight. I read actually quite a bit. That's around 40% of the way into the book. Something about how Samantha Downing writes short chapters and not every single one of them, but every couple end on like a cliffhanger or where you are just wanting more information about our characters. Wes and Ivy are some seriously messed up 
people. It's going to be so much fun reading this book from such a unique perspective that we don't normally get to read about. There's also that detective in this book that I mentioned earlier and I am stopping on an ominous note because the cliffhanger from chapter 31 was actually about her so I think there has to be something more to her than what has been let on so far. So far I'm really loving this and I easily have the vibe that I will be finishing this book up tomorrow. Hello friends, I've been packing for like the past couple hours just him hawing around and somehow that led into me spending an hour in my closet trying on every single shirt that I own. I'm not very proud of it, do not know why I did it, but ultimately it has allowed me to basically listen to the rest of this audiobook. I wanted to hop on here because I only have two chapters left and the epilogue and I have to fold some shirts so I'm going to listen to it while I do that. Given that we only have an epilogue and like two chapters left and we still have no idea idea what's going to happen. I'm like on the edge of my seat waiting to figure this out because genuinely I have so many guesses and do not know what's going to happen next. I'm a little too much. Don't really know why. I can be alive, but you don't seem to mind. Baby, you're so different cause others wouldn't even an hour to gather all of my thoughts about this book but holy crap if you don't know anything about Samantha Downing, all you need to take away is that she can write some of the best dark, twisty, obsession-filled love stories that just feed the little toxic gremlin inside of you. <laughs> Or at least it does me. The narration of this book is told from like four to five different perspectives, but I had no problem keeping all of these characters separated. Wes and Ivy are some of the most twisted characters I've ever read, and I absolutely love that for them and myself, but they're just ones that won't live in my head rent free. I loved the story, but I didn't really get connected to the characters. This is one of those relationships that you know is unhealthy, but the people that are in it refuse to see it. They refuse to think otherwise because in their minds, they are being their best selves with each other, but everybody on the outside is like screaming, waving red flags in their faces, but obviously they're just going to keep ignoring them. I also want to take a second to appreciate the character of the detective Karen. I'm pretty sure her name was Karen. She is always on the side of justice. She wants justice to be served for those who rightfully deserve it. But also on the flip side, it makes me question why she is a detective and why she is as far up as she is in her rankings because she is so narrow and one sight minded. As soon as she has one theory, she sticks to it. And it's almost like she refuses to believe anything else or anyone else could have actually done the crime except for the person that's in her head. So that was just a really interesting flip on a detective character. Based on all the information that we were getting, there were so many different ways that this story could have concluded, but it ended in a way that I obviously didn't respect. Y'all saw my jaw hanging on the floor. Personally, I really, really enjoyed this and I'm going to give it a solid four star rating. I have read so many reviews of people giving this three stars or less and they all say the same thing. They're giving it that low of a rating because the story was lackluster and there weren't any twists. If you want a thriller where you're being thrown around left and right and you want things out of the blue to happen, this is not that book for you. This is a very fact and character driven story where the twists aren't coming, but it's just addictive to read. Also, you dive into the characters' minds, figuring out why they are rooted and doing the things the way they do. So yes, to conclude with this, I definitely would recommend it, but I think it would be a recommendation for a certain person. I have now read three of Samantha Downing's books. I've rated them all four and a half, four and a half, and now four stars. The only one I haven't read was her 2020 release, I think, and that one 
is called He Started It. I need to pick it up, but everywhere just has the paperback versions and obviously I collect her books in hardcover. So I do want to get my hands on that sometime soon. I genuinely have no idea what I'm going to read now because I leave for vacation on Friday and it is Tuesday night at 9.51 p.m. And I don't want to start my vacation book yet because I want to read that while I'm away because my dad and I are buddy reading it and we're both gonna read it during the week that I'm gone and then talk about it when I get back and it's gonna be a cute little thing. But now I have like two days and I know I'm gonna have some time to read. I just gotta figure out what it is that I could read in a short amount of time. Put a finger down if you have the best boss ever, AKA my mother. She brought me donuts. Y'all never fail to surprise me. So this morning I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to read over the next two days because I did not pick last night. I ended up falling asleep shocker but i was looking through a few titles that i have on audible and one of those titles was heart bones by colleen hoover i have never read a colleen hoover specifically romance book before but i wasn't 100 percent sold on the idea of reading that one so instead i was like you know let's put a pull up on my instagram and have my followers decide i feel like that would be more fun anyways so i put heart bones up against icebreaker by hannah grace the audiobook had just become available for me overnight so i woke up up to it being available on Libby. So I put those two together and to no one's surprise, Icebreaker won the poll. I'll pop it up on the screen here so you can see the final percentages. Honestly, I shouldn't have been shocked with this outcome, but I was a little bit. So I guess now, instead of starting my first romance Colleen Hoover book, I will now be reading Icebreaker. Literally the only thing I know about this is that it's a figure skater and maybe a hockey player. And apparently there's like an Uber scene or something something that is talked about all over bookstagram it's time to figure out what this uber scene is all about garage reading typing up stuff doing a bunch of social media things hence my appearance i am humid and gross need to shower but before i do that i wanted to hop on with a little icebreaker update i am on chapter 11 or 12 i want to say i stopped reading in the middle of the chapter <gasps> i know it's a crime i'm committing it I am well aware, but I wanted to get my thoughts out before I lost them. So I feel like everybody under the sun has already read Icebreaker, but if you don't know what Icebreaker is about, this is a college romance where we are following Anastasia, our main female character who is on the competitive figure skating team. And then our other love interest here is the captain of the hockey team and his name is Nate, right? Nate. They just met because of an unfortunate situation that happened and it seems like the theme of this season is going to be unexpected happenings in the sense that these two characters are going to have to learn to work together to be around each other, some forced proximity in there, and hence a relationship ensuing. Thoughts that I have about some of the characters so far, Anastasia is very picky so I hope she doesn't get too picky in a sense that she becomes annoying. Nate here is giving golden retriever vibes. He is becoming a fictional man that I will like to read from the perspective of, and he already gave Anastasia a nickname within like the first time of the meeting, so an extra point for Nate. Her best friends, Lola and Ryan, absolutely, I love both of them, but don't even get me started on Aaron. Aaron is a dick period. Hannah Grace's writing is pretty modern and funny so far, so I'm enjoying that. I just hope it doesn't become too relevant where it's taking me out of the story. And the only other thought I have about this is, holy hell, it is spicy so far. Should I be scared? I don't know. I kind of am. I look like a rat with my hair like this, but I've just been laying in bed editing for the past hour and a half or so, and it has gotten so unbelievably windy out like, can you hear that? You probably can. It is blowing so hard out right now. There's like stuff hitting the side of my house. I can hear it. Absolutely crazy. I don't know if it's gonna storm or what. It doesn't show that it's supposed to. Part of me is like, 
a little sus about it. I wish I was reading a spooky book right now. That would be perfect. Hello, hello, good morning, and happy Thursday. This camera is at a really odd angle because I am in my dad's truck and I have it very precariously placed on the center console. But my dad just went in to get his hair cut, so I obviously chose to sit in the truck. I am going to see how much further I can get into Icebreaker. I am going to do a little reading sprint for myself. This will either be like five minutes or if there's a line, it might take 20. So let's see how far I actually get into Icebreaker. I'm starting on page 103 just for reference so I was completely right that little haircut only took approximately like 0.2 seconds and I only got 10 pages farther into my book I just wanted to hop on here with a little reading update real quick. I got home from work, finished packing, and did basically all of the things I needed to do. So I'm taking a little bit of time to sit out here in my garage and do a reading sprint. I am 50% of the way into the book. I stopped just before chapter 24 and there's a kid like two streets over from me i can see it in their backyard and he's taking a baseball bat and beating the ground not my child don't gotta worry about it so thoughts about icebreaker so far i feel like i'm in the minority because i'm not connecting very well with this when i read earlier today when my dad was getting his hair cut i didn't know that chapter was the uber scene because we we're literally like 10 percent of the way into the book and honestly i didn't expect the main scene that everybody talks about to be so early in the book so that kind of confused me along with our two main characters getting together so early i'm 50 percent of the way in and i'm like okay our characters are already together there's no pining there's no miscommunications going on they're very good at talking about their feelings and emotions and their intentions what they are going to do so i feel like this is just more of a love story now i still stand by everything i said originally about all of the characters the only thing i want to add about that is all of nate's hockey team all of those players are freaking adorable the way they all look out for anastasia without having to say words it's more of actions absolutely to have that support in her life whether she realizes it or not is something very special i'm talking about this as if this is real but obviously it's a fictional story alexis but that's just really nice to see i'm hoping some exciting things happened because still having 50 percent of the book left kind of scares me so just a little update i proceeded to move inside it got a little bit dark out but i have been reading and listening and just packing a few bits and bobs that i still need to put in my backpack for the trip i was going to show you this cute rug that i bought myself today but instead i sliced my finger open with a razor and it stings really really bad so i'll be dealing with that for a second anyways here is the rug that i wanted to show you guys it's pretty long i think it's like 60 inches long i put it in front of my sink in my kitchen i went to tj maxx today to look at something for my mother but instead i walked out with this rug for myself i absolutely love it it was 30 dollars. so if you like it be sure to run to tj maxx before the spooky season because i am sure this is going to sell out here's it up close just so you guys can see it's like a yarn material I want to say it's very very soft and it is also gripped on the bottom so it won't be sliding around y'all I did it I've completed what I wanted to I just finished reading icebreaker and my lord is this book chunky when I tapped the cover of this book that really hurt my fingertip because it is well obviously you're not going to be able to see I sliced it good and it stings I need to review this pretty quickly actually because I need to be up at like 4 a.m and it's already 11 o'clock I know I'm not going to be able to get a lot of sleep but a girl can try so I have a little bit of a mixed review because I actually didn't really really love this i enjoyed it don't get me wrong but i didn't absolutely fall in love with it like everyone else so the last time i checked in i think was around the 50 percent mark and the last half of this book so good if we simply would have gotten content from the last 50 percent in the first half of the book rather than it just being spice and random college shenanigans that weren't really drug out as long as they were i simply would have given this five stars i read a bunch of goodreads reviews and 
and it seems like the common thing was everyone said after the 40% mark it drug, but I guess I just have the opposite opinion because that's truly when I started investing in the story. A little character update, I really appreciated and acknowledge Anastasia's growth throughout this. There's lots of heavier topics that are acknowledged in the light they should be and fully talked about within this book, so for that I appreciate it. Hannah Grace did a really good job at not skipping over those tougher parts. Nate as the male love interest, I loved. I think this just speaks on the maturity level for these two characters, but the way they healthily communicated with each other was like, what the heck is happening? Because y'all know, if you're in college, there's no communication, but that was the complete opposite for this book. Aaron could go get lost in the woods for all I care. I have never hated a character so much. That's a lie. And a few reading vlogs back, I got really heated about a set of parents in a book. Which again, there is a toxic dad in this book. What is it with all these like current popular authors writing about toxic families? Do we all have like trauma? Jeez. Anyways, last few things about the characters. I love Anastasia's best friend, Lola. 10 out of 10 character. I honestly think that's my favorite part of this book is Nate's hockey team, all of those players being there for one another, and especially looking out for Lola and Anastasia. It just holds such a special place in my heart. The first epilogue from Nate's perspective, I loved. And then of course we get the second epilogue from Anastasia's perspective, which is at two and a half years later and it is the one trope that I cannot stand that is just thrown in at the end of a book. I do not want to spoil it if you haven't read it but it's just one of those things. I knew it was going to happen because it's a topic that is discussed quite a few times within here and I knew it was coming. It was inevitable and I still hated it. Absolutely no thank you. I think this book ultimately was just a little bit longer than it needed to be. I know there's a few scenes in there that could have been shortened or cut out it was just a bit repetitive and it drug along at times. And for that reason, I'm going to settle on giving Icebreaker a three star rating. I can definitely see how this got all of the hype on TikTok. I can see how it's loved, but I have just read other romances that I have fallen in love with more. And I don't think this will be one that will stick in my brain. I know there's a second book in the series coming out. Let me look up what that book is titled really fast. It's called Wildfire and it comes out October. October 3rd of this year, 2023. This book follows two summer camp counselors who reconnect after a sizzling one night stand. Oh, this follows Russ Callahan and Aurora Roberts. Russ, okay, I could get behind that. How many pages is it? Let me look at that. Another 400 page book. So with all of that being said, I absolutely need to end this reading vlog here because I need to soak up whatever minutes of sleep I can get before I leave for vacation tomorrow. As always, thank you guys so much for watching another weekly reading vlog from me. I need to film some sit down videos when I get back and I already have ideas for what those will be. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button down below and I will catch you guys in my next video. See ya. Is that it? I just want my t-shirt and I don't know where it's at. Ho oh, oh. ho. My eyes are like fuzzy. Ouch. Jesus! And one of those was Colleen Hoover's Ow, I hit myself in the face again. Ooh,